Hello, my name is Mark O'Han, and I'm very excited to bring you my full review of the Panasonic GH4. The Panasonic GH line has been one of the most essential lines for Panasonic for a lot of great reasons. One, it does take great stills, but this review is not about stills, it's about video. All the way back to the Panasonic GH2 and they hacked the GH2, people saw great potential from the camera. It had better video quality than the 5D Mark II at that time, which was held as being one of the best DSLRs for video making. So when I first heard rumors of the GH4 back in 2013 about about 4K video recording on board, I was a bit skeptical about it being uh, even done at that time because 4K internal recording is a very complex thing. There's tons of data, tons of resolution, and you have to have some kind of fast storage. Usually some kind of solid state drives or compact flashes, and those cards are very expensive. SSDs, not so much, but CF cards, they are very expensive. The 1DC uses them, and they are very expensive cards. But then we go to CES 2014, and we actually saw a prototype of the Panasonic Panasonic 4K camera, and it looked exactly the same as the Panasonic GH3, which is a good thing for a lot of people because it's very familiar, it's very similar to the Panasonic GH3, which is a very phenomenal camera for 1080p video. And then fast forward to February when Panasonic actually announced the GH4, I was kind of disappointed about the Panasonic GH4. It didn't have exactly everything the rumors had. The rumors said it would have high frame rate 4K, 120 frames per second slow motion in 1080p, and very substantial software to match. Now I was feeling disappointed because I was expecting a camera around the $2,500 mark range. It's going to compete with the Blackmagic production camera and it's going to have some serious log modes and good codecs. Now after I saw that, the announcement, they released a lot of footage and I was overtaken by the amount of great content. And also, the community were kind of against the GH4 at first because they said, again, why do we not have high frame rate 4K video? Why did they limit the 200 megabits per second codec for only 1080p video? And why is the slow motion only rated at 96 frames per second and lacks the audio and lacks the autofocus? But again, this camera cost 1700 US dollars and we are kind of expecting a little too much from a camera that's this small and this affordable. So GH4 is a pretty small type of camera. It's about the same size as the Canon T4i or any of the Rebel series of cameras. Uh, and the ability of this little guy is quite impressive. First, let me talk about the photo update. So it does uh, 12 frames per second and continuous autofocus shooting. Uh, on top of that, it actually has the fastest autofocus in the world for a mirrorless camera. On the video side, where the GH4 is most impressive. Not only can it shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second at super high bit rates, 200 megabits per second to be in fact, it it also shoots two flavors of 4K, a 3840 UHD or web friendly mode and a cinema 4K 4096 for that true cinema mode. Now the size of a GH4 is pretty darn dinky and small. It's about the same size as the Canon T4i, which makes it a very tiny digital SLR, but it is a mirrorless camera, so it is going to be bigger than your Alpha A6000 or all your NEX cameras or even your Olympus OMD cameras or some of them anyways. Uh, but again, this is still a very tiny and lightweight camera, especially when you take off the lens. It's a pretty tiny, tiny camera. Which brings me on to the sensor. Now, this is where the GH4 gets most of its hate. It's, it's micro four-thirds sensor, which is a smaller sensor compared to your Canon C100, your uh, Blackmagic production camera, really anything with a Super 35 or a full frame sensor like the Canon 1DC. Now Micro Four Thirds gives this camera an effective two times crop, but then Panasonic had a very difficult choice to make of either cropping it a little bit more for 4K video or pixel bin and have a full two times crop when it comes to 4K video. And I'm very happy to say that they did take that crop factor and make it about 2.3 for 4K video. That means you actually have better resolution and better quality video from the actual 4K content instead of pixel bidding and, you know, skipping lines and that just stuff, you know, that doesn't make sense in video production, especially when you aim this camera at a pro consumer or the professional or really professional videographer, which this camera is really aimed for, but it's also aimed for consumers who want to shoot 4K video or really good quality 1080p video. Now that extra crop is 
not the end of the world. With this 12 to 35 millimeter Panasonic lens, it gives you an effective 27.5 to about 85 millimeter range. Now that's not the widest angle lens in the world. You probably need something a little bit wider, like the Panasonic 7 to 14. That's not a fisheye lens, and that will probably give you your wide angle lens. So the only way to get to know a camera is to shoot with one, which is why we're here at the Parthenon in Nashville, Tennessee, shooting with the Panasonic GH4. And one of the benefits of having such a small and compact camera is it is quite easy to shoot handheld videos. Now you do need an OIS lens. Uh, thankfully this 1235 lens is OIS. Uh, it is a heavy and expensive set of glass. It's about a thousand US dollars and it gives you a pretty wide angle lens about 28 uh, all the way up to about the 85 zone. So it is a very good video lens. Now with the codex you can grade this GH4 footage very very well. It does hold very well to a medium amount of grading. Now if you push it too much you will start seeing it fall apart, but that's just the downside of recording into a compressed format, unlike ProRes or even RAW format where you can basically push it however you want it. big talk about the GH4 is its true 4K cinema mode, which records a 4096 by 2160 in the true 24 frames per second. Not that 23.98 frames per second bullcrap, it's a true 24p bitrate and stream, which means you'll have great cinematic view. Now, great additions to the GH4 would include focus peaking and zebras, things that you really didn't have on any previous GH model, and they are extremely important for any kind of professional video camera. Now we can switch our focus onto the video quality from the GH4. I've used this camera for about three and a half weeks and I have a pretty good grasp about what this camera is capable of and what it's not capable of.
Now when it comes to slow motion video capture, the king of slow motion for under the $10,000 range is still going to be the Sony FS700 because it does a 240 FPS at full 1080p. You also have things like the Sony F55 and F65, but those are way out of budget, about $30,000. Uh, the GH4 maximum hits a 96 frames per second variable frame rate form in 1080p. Uh, it's a pretty smooth slow motion video. It looks very nice. It's pleasing. Uh, you do get a lot of moiré and aliasing from the video, which uh, aren't very aesthetically pleasing in any type of slow motion video, but it is very, uh, it is there. Uh, my personal favorite is actually shooting the full 1080p, 60p, and just doing half speed or even more aggressive speed reduction in post. Now, one of the most important things about a camera is how well you can control one. Uh, and basically the GH4 is like a DSLR. So if you've used DSLRs before, it's basically essentially the same thing. It's not as ergonomic as the C100 or any of the C cameras from Canon because they are very ergonomically perfect cameras, but it's definitely more ergonomic than the Sony FS100 and the 700. And everything lies exactly where you think it would be. The shutter button here, the record button, all the other controls are very accessible, just like your standard DSLR. Now in terms of storage and SD card, cards and media, you have to buy expensive fast cards. Now this is a Kingston 64 gigabyte card. It does a 90 megabytes per second read and an 80 megabits per second write. You have to have a card that can sustain a 35 megabytes per second file transfer and this one is way over that. Uh, but this is about 100 bucks for 64 gigabytes. That roughly gets you about an hour and 25 minutes to the card. So have three or four of these and you will be good for a good four four to five hours of shooting on these SD cards, but they do get expensive. There's only one disappointment when it comes to SD cards, and it's actually not even the card, it's actually the GH4. There's only one SD card slot, and when you're recording 4K storage and videos, you do need a lot of storage, and one SD card won't cut it. Uh, the GH4 is a different camera altogether. It's really the perfect camera for anyone who wants to be an indie filmmaker, a product reviewer, anyone who wants to ease themselves into 4K video with a camera that shoots great stills and amazing 4K video for under the $2,000 mark. Now obviously that's under $2,000 for the body only. You do need glass. Uh, this whole body right here, this is about $3,000 put together with the glass and the body. Uh, so it is a very expensive setup, but so is anything else like the Blackmagic production camera or a Red Scarlet. Don't Google the prices of those setups because they will make your eyes water. If you need a 4K camera and you need it now, the Panasonic GH4 is one of the best solutions for 4K video. If you don't care so much about 4K video and just want really good high bitrate video, you might better be off buying a GH3. It's still a beautiful, amazing, camera and they are still selling it because this isn't exactly a replacement for the GH4, more of a step up for the GH3 from the GH4 for people who want to do 4K video and are serious about their 4K and video production. And now don't take my word as gospel, this is an amazing camera. It's very, very, very capable of recording amazing video. Just because you're seeing the video now, it's beautiful, it looks great, it's a very good image for the money and again, as I said, there's nothing for under $10,000 that's better than the Panasonic GH4 in my opinion. Now I haven't used anything else that shoots 4K in 2014 because it hasn't been released yet and I'm very looking forward to a lot of the cameras that are coming out in 2014 that do shoot 4K video. So don't take only my word for buying the GH4. Definitely go out, rent one, buy it, use it, try to see if you like this sort of setup. It's definitely not for everybody but this is one of the best cameras that I have ever used and I'll leave it as that. It's better than my C 100 in terms of image quality. It's better than the 5D Mark III in my opinion. It's better than the Sony FS700 and much better than the Black Magic production camera. That's my opinion. I think this is a great camera from Panasonic. I'm really excited to see what Panasonic has in store for the future of their GH line and I'm sure they have lots of promising stuff from this guy. Uh, and this is a special, special camera with tons of capabilities, and I can't say this more than enough, the Panasonic GH4 is the perfect 4K camera for anyone who has a budget to buy, say, a spec out 70 d with a couple of lenses. If you have the money for 1700 bucks and you can afford one lens, this 12 to 35 millimeter lens, you will have the amazing run and gun 4K camera, or even the beautiful studio 4K camera that shoots 
amazing, amazing, amazing looking 4K video. So thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any comments, questions below. You can send those questions as well to my Twitter account at Marco M. Hanna. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the Pro Consumer for much more content. Uh, we might have a revisit to the Panasonic GH4. We have some comparisons coming with the Scarlett and a couple of other cameras, especially the Blackmagic production camera, since that's the only real camera competing this guy in terms of bang for buck. So my name is Marco Hanna from the Pro Consumer. Thanks for watching my Panasonic GH4 review. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.